Here's a question you might not ask yourself too often. What types of storage clutter do I have? Today, we're going to find out. Storage is an interesting thing. The definition of storage is basically anything that's retained for use in the future, which means that basically everything we have in our homes is indeed storage. It's my belief that if you're storing something for a short amount of time and using it or admiring it regularly, then it isn't really clutter for you. So in this video, I want to focus on those longer term storage items, the things that you keep packed away for a long period of time, let's say half a year or longer. My hope is that this video will be a good source of reflection to really ponder what types of storage items that you're holding on to. And once you've identified those types, then ask yourself the honest question of what are the odds that those items are going to be taken out of storage and used on a more regular rotation? If the answer is a clear no, then it's likely it's time that those things go. So with all of that in mind, let's get straight to the list of the 15 most common types of storage clutter. First on the list are the things you have space for. Boy, is it convenient to not deal with asking the question if you need to keep something or not. If you have the space, you don't have to think about it. You just box those items up that you aren't using and shove them aside, maybe to the back of a walk-in closet, the basement, or the attic. It could be months or years before they are revisited or dealt with. What's harmful about this type of clutter is that it constantly builds. It spills out of the house into that large attached garage or separate storage shed. Companies have made a huge profit catering to this type of clutter by offering rental space. Run out of room to store everything on your own property? No problem. You can store off site for a price. Be very careful for this sneaky clutter. Maybe some of the items that you're storing or that are just hanging around are there because of guilt. If they were received as a gift from someone you care about or passed down to you from a relative, there's an extra layer of connection to that item. Ironically, even if you would never have chosen that specific item for yourself, you feel obligated to keep it around because there's this level of guilt. You may feel like you're letting the gift giver down by not holding on to it. Or worse yet, you may have been told that it's your responsibility to preserve something, given a verbal guilt trip. This type of clutter will ultimately cause resentment and frustration. Memories are another very common reason why clutter is stored in our homes. It's like when we hold on to these things, we believe that we can be transported back to that point in time, if even for just a moment. The fear of letting go of these types of items is really because of the fear of not being able to remember. There can be a genuine worry that a piece of yourself might be lost with the elimination of that item. And let me tell you, that is a very dangerous mindset to have. On a related note, some of those memories might not be great ones, and holding on to the clutter is actually a distraction technique to keep from having to deal with emotions or feelings that might be subconsciously tied to those things. Letters, photos, or even items from a hard past. If you don't have to look at them, you don't have to relive those memories, and you might even trick yourself into believing that they never even happened in the first place. But it's important to note that if you have this type of storage clutter, it will continue to have a grip on your psyche. If you're sick of that feeling, it's time to release those items. Paper storage clutter can pile up so quickly. I'm talking about everything from kids craft projects to birthday cards to documentation such as tax return paperwork, receipts, or product manuals. Many paper items are seen as precious or valuable because no others like it exist. It isn't like a sweater that you could throw out and replace fairly easily. You won't be able to replicate that little paper mache Christmas ornament that your child made in the second grade or get a new receipt for something you bought that you might need to return. I personally used to allocate quite a bit of space to paper items. I had it all saved just in case I wanted to look at it again or reference it for some reason or another. But guess what? I never did. It just kept piling up year after year. I finally came to the conclusion, as I mentioned in my first point, that space was running out. Reflect for yourself. 
Are you storing a lot of paper? Another storage category that can be a trap are bulky items. And many times these things are stored because, well, simply, they're just difficult to deal with. Maybe that's a boat, an extra car, or furniture. Pianos are a notorious example. They get stored right in plain sight, and even if you never use them, they take up a ton of space, and they're such a hassle to get rid of. In fact, you can practically not even give them away these days. And so these types of things just sit and you continue to store them. If you're nodding your head right now, my best advice is to ask for help in the decluttering of this particular category of items. Ask around for resources on how to rid your home of these large items that are no longer of use to you anymore. Seasonal clutter is very popular. Those are the things that are only used for a small portion of the year. If you live in a multi-season area, I don't see any way of really getting around storing certain items. You certainly wouldn't want to buy a new coat each winter. But the thing is, we tend to have totes upon totes of this category of items and we almost use it as an excuse to keep more than we actually need. As a personal example, I used to do this with winter gloves for my kids. The logic was that if I kept the extra pairs, they could be worn when or if the first pair got soaking wet from playing in the snow. What really happened was that by the time that first pair got soaking wet, the kids would be ready to be done playing anyway. So those extra pairs just stayed at the bottom of the bin. Just be mindful that you're using all of the seasonal stuff that you store. If not, consider decluttering. We all know that life changes, and with it our needs change too. Even still, a common stored category is non-relevant clutter. These are things that are from a previous season in life that aren't really in line with your current situation, but you feel the need, the urge to hold on to them, whether for memory's sake or on the odd chance that you might use them again. I've heard from multiple women who have an entire business wardrobe of clothing from the days that they worked in a corporate setting that just hangs in their closets unused now that they're stay-at-home moms. It is possible to be proud of a portion of your life without keeping the stuff as a reminder. It's important to focus on the present time as much as possible without dwelling on the past or hoping too much for the future. Being content with each stage or season of life will help to reduce this type of storage clutter naturally. Stockpile storage is the next thing I want to talk about. Bulk canned goods, toiletries, etc. The intentions are good. You figure that nothing will go to waste because eventually you will get around to using it. It also gives some comfort to know that there's a stash available should you fall on hard times. The trouble with this type of storage clutter is that it can get out of hand and go overboard. It can also make a person rely on feelings of insecurity and scarcity and ultimately create almost a fear-based mindset. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with wanting to be prepared for an emergency and keeping some excess for those occasions, but really think hard about how much is necessary. What is reasonable? Keep in mind that this stockpile, if not given a boundary or limit, will continue to grow and take up other space in your home that could be used for other purposes. Save for the future just in case storage clutter might just be the most common of all. I think this category is different than the stockpile items in that they aren't necessarily things that you would want to have on hand in an emergency setting. These are things like baby toys or clothes that are kept for a future baby that may or may not be born, or a sewing machine that's hanging around, not ever used, on the off chance that you might take up quilting again. Most of the time, anything in this category could be repurchased in the event that they are actually needed. So just be thoughtful about the cost value that these items are providing. Another very common reason that people store clutter is because of delayed decisions. I call this category the junk drawer of clutter. Ultimately, these things are pretty random. Tools, extra keys, game pieces, random bits and bobs. You came across them at some point and didn't really want to answer the questions about if you will use it again or where they should go. So instead, you shove them into a box or a drawer or a closet and just delayed making those decisions. 
Ultimately, I suppose most things that are stored for an extended period of time would fall into this category. Have you been delaying? Perhaps it's time to make some decluttering decisions. You've probably heard the phrase, make do or do without. It's a good thought, truly, but it's also a reason that some clutter hangs around for a really long time. If something isn't broken, we keep it around because it could still be useful. If we purchase an upgraded version of something, we keep the previous version as a backup. Raise your hand if your kids are the proud owners of some of your outdated technology, such as computers or phones. It's a good habit to not be wasteful. Just remember though, if you think something could be useful, but you're not using it, make it available to somebody who will. Along those same lines, many items are stored because we don't want to be wasteful. If we spent money on something, even if we aren't going to use it again, we hold on to it because we want to get a return on our investment. Basically, everything goes down in value the second it's purchased. You've always heard that about vehicles, but the same is true for everything we buy. It's funny how when we've owned something for a while and gained a little attachment to it that we think it's more valuable than it actually is. Truth is, things are only worth what someone will pay for them monetarily or value emotionally. You may be able to sell something and get at least a portion of the money back that you spent on it, which would be better than nothing at all. It's more wasteful for an item to go unused and never again see the light of day. Then there are the special occasion storage items. That one time you bring out the serving platter for the Thanksgiving turkey, it's justified in your mind. And for some objects, that may be the case, but many others need to be re-evaluated. This one makes me honestly a little sad because it's almost like saying that these things are too good to be used, like each day isn't special. But I do understand the thought process behind it and I personally have some storage items that fall in this category. The thing that helps me with it though is to have those items on display so that they are serving a purpose at all times. They are essentially decor and we can admire them often instead of just taking up space in a random box that gets pulled out rarely. Some clutter accumulates for no other reason than simply a busy schedule or lack of time. Maybe some of the things being stored are projects that you hope to want to get to eventually when you have more time. A scarf that is half knitted, a furniture piece that you plan to refinish, or even something large like a vintage automobile. When you're re-evaluating this type of storage clutter, it's important to be realistic about your expectations. If you haven't prioritized it up to this point, what is going to be the reason that you will in the future? It might make you a little sad to see some of these things go, but it may also give you a sense of freedom that you weren't expecting. I think that this list will give you a lot to think about and consider. You might want to go to some of the storage spots that you have around your house and do just a really basic inventory of what you have in those boxes and bins. Write that information down and then reflect back on this list to determine what category those items fit into. Understanding the why behind your clutter is really the first step in being able to make those decisions about what stays and what should go. And only you can make that final determination. And I hope that you at the very least feel empowered to begin asking those questions. And I'll be here to support you along the way. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope to see you back here again really soon.